A couple of people have sent me on this article from the Irish Catholic about um, young priests hurt by rigid stereotype in synod report. So I'm just going to read through this um, and give my thoughts on it because so many people have asked me to comment on it. I thought I'd comment on it and give some encouragement to these men. Young Irish priests have expressed their hurt at being characterised as rigid in the National Synodal Synthesis sent to Rome recently. The synthesis, which identified key themes emerging from the nationwide consultation, made one mention of younger priests saying some participants were concerned that some younger priests were very traditional and rigid in their thinking. This characterization was actually quite hurtful, uh, Father David Varr told this paper. We were never spoken to as a group when it comes to the synthesis. Not surprised. Not surprised. I don't know who this synthesis report has, has actually spoken to, to be honest. Probably Father Brendan Hoban and his crew. I think if people see a young man who is in love with the church and with what the church teaches, it's almost seen as a negative thing. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. I don't think it's a negative thing, and I think it's a beautiful thing, said Father David, um, CC Port Leash Parish. Father David added that we're doing all. We're all doing our best and I think people are happy with their young priests. His view was echoed by Father Jamie Tuig, a um, Palatine priest, who questioned what the word rigid means. I don't personally take offence, but I think it's just a very flawed generalisation, Father Tuig said. Does, does what, sorry, does that mean we're orthodox? that we actually believe what the church believes? If that's rigid, then I'm happy to be rigid. Despite the negative characterizations of young priests, Father Declan Noen in Renmore County Galway says, I love what I do, love the pastoral care of people. I wouldn't like anyone to think that I have anything but the greatest of respect for everyone I meet. Uh, whenever they, wherever they are, on their faith journey. Father Lohan criticised the narrowed, narrowing down of what a younger priest does to doctrinal questions as a, a short-sighted view. A younger priest is there when a person is dying, is there in the household of a parish for the first Friday calls, is welcoming very often families distant from the church for baptisms, journeying with couples on their way to marriage, meeting with families who are in grief. We are fully there for everyone in difficult moments, doing the hidden work of a priest day in, day out. Father Lowen acknowledged that there may be reticence about wearing traditional priestly garb given Ireland's past, but it's more than counterbalanced by the need for a visible sign of a pastor among them and with them. So that is the, the article that... Uh, that the, the, the Irish Catholic published and well done to the Irish Catholic for actually taking the time to interview these priests. I mean, in knock on Saturday, in knock on Saturday, there were 11 uh, priests, Indian priests. I have here the photo, I'll just show you the photo. 11 Indian priests. I think they're from the Syria Malabar Church. Maybe somebody could, um, could correct me or the Syrian Malakara church. Uh, there's two rites in Kerala province in India. I'm not sure which they were. They, I, I'm nearly sure they weren't Roman Catholic. But they were all there dressed with their identity as priests, um, uh, you know, with the with their cassock and their, and their beretta f from their right. You know, I speak from experience here, being a seminarian for nine years, a religious in the Legions of Christ. I used to wear a cassock, and if I was out, I would wear a suit with clerics. Always did. Always wore the collar. And hundreds of times people used to stop me. They would say, Padre. And I'd say, no, I'm not Father. I'm a, I'm a religious brother. And, uh, oh, Father. And then it would always, always strike up a conversation. If it was on the bus or in Rome, nearly always, somebody would strike up a conversation with me, look at me, question me. It it was simply that. There are pr ordained priests in the church 
today, they are ordained there because they came to the faith and to their vocation through me, through my work. No, God, I mean, it's not me, it's God doing it. But you know what I mean? God used me um, for what he he needed me to do. Now, he did, he asked me, I wasn't called to the priesthood. I would love to have been a priest, love to have been a priest. But I knew I wasn't called to that vocation. God wanted me somewhere else. And so I had to follow his voice very, very clearly. Um, But that said, I understand the Pope's fear when it comes to rigidity. Now, there's two areas where rigidity can be, you know, you can have the the outward exteriors of so-called rigidity and not have all of the formation behind you. But you can have all of that formation and have your identity as a priest. Um, and it's hard to get it right. I, I know where the church is going. I know Pope, Pope Francis means well in this area. But having a good structural prayer life and a structured life as a priest and having an identity as a priest is key is absolutely key you know sports people have their identity they wear it on their arms you know a a garda he has his identity he has his uniform everybody knows who he is when he's out on the street doing his job you know uh, it's good to have your religious identity you know there for people to see and as i said i speak from experience as a as a young man in his 20s who spent nine years wearing uh, clerical garb as uh, the cassock or if it wasn't the cassock it was um a suit but i i, mean, I always wore it I, every every time i went out i always wore it traveled around the world i i worked in mexico i worked in um uh, spain italy poland czech republic slovakia hungary um romania um and even when I was a seminarian, I remember um, staying with the Orthodox, the, the Eastern Orthodox, and they have their identity as priests. Even a married priest would always wear a cassock. You know, he would he you would he would identify with what his state in life was, his mission as a priest. If you go to the East, you I mean, Mount Athos, every everybody would wear a cassock. Every priest, uh, either celibate priest, the monks or the married priest, they all wore cassocks. There's nothing wrong with this. There is this movement in Ireland to destroy the Catholic faith, to destroy everything that the faith stands for, starting with the Eucharist and finishing with the priesthood. And young priests need to stand up and tell the generation that's thir- 20 or 30 years ahead of you, Please go away and leave us alone and let us get on with our apostolate and our job. In 20, 30 years, that generation that's in their 70s and 80s at the moment will be gone. It'll be up to you to lead the church forward. And it's important to have a profound life of prayer, you know, to build on that and to use your identity as a priest to bring Christ to souls in Ireland and to live it, to live it, to live, always live it. You know, never, never. Uh, my my personal opinion is every priest in Ireland should wear a cassock, a satan. Every priest, every single priest should wear a satan. Every single parish priest in Ireland should spend thirty minutes before mass confessing, and b- opening souls to grace. Be a priest, be a real priest. Don't be halfway. Younger priests get this. Thanks be to God, the younger priests in Ireland, they get their identity. Why bother becoming a priest today and not being able to live your identity? That is what God called you to. To be his minister. To be him. To be his priest. Just live it. Forget about the other, the the the, the post-Vatican II generation, the Association of Catholic Priests and all those. They'll be gone in 20 years. They leave no legacy. They leave nothing behind them. They leave nothing behind them, like in this parish. Father Brendan Hoban left nothing behind him, sadly. There is no vocations there. He didn't enkindle the faith in men to follow him in the priesthood. And that's in general with the Association of Catholic Priests, because they don't teach the faith. They don't love the faith. You know, it's hard to say that. And maybe he wasn't formed in the faith. But we need to call out now. Because he's well able to call out younger priests. Well, we have to give a counterbalance. 
young priests, young men and seminarians, young priests in Ireland need mentorship, prayer and support as, I mean, anything we can do to help them and they will get it. There is lots of good men around Ireland now that will support young priests and seminarians. They need to know that they are loved in the church. We need you. We actually need you in the Irish church. We need your apostles. We need your prayer. We need you turning to prayer. We need you leading us in adoration. And if you can, please say traditional Latin Mass. Learn the Mass of the Ages. Be men of prayer. Lead us in prayer. So, you know, we need to give, and this is key for the Irish church, you need to give as much prayer and encouragement to priests as possible. You know, it's it's key and vital. This, the synthesis document said nothing about this. Nothing. Didn't talk about depression in the priesthood. You know, there is depression in the priesthood. The way they are treated by their peers or by other priests. There's a lot of pressures on the priesthood in Ireland. Not even mentioned in the synthesis document. I mean, the cynical document, the pathway to hell, I call it. Simple as. That's what that document is. It's not even good enough to be used as toilet paper. And that's harsh for me to say that, but it's true. Because it's glaringly obvious what is missing from there. I mean, the priesthood, the problems of the priesthood, not discussed once. Apart from the fact that they're, they're ringing vocations. Priests need prayer and support, mentorship. They need to make, bishops need to make sure that they have their holiday schedule. They need time off. And they should be encouraged to live their identity as priests. So, you know, I just want to give that encouragement and thank God for those young priests who spoke out. You know, it's, there's nothing wrong with having your identity, with living the Catholic faith. And sometimes, you know, the Catholic faith will, will you know, is, is what it is. It is, in a sense, it's, it's a rigid structure. It is what it is. Sin is sin. Grace is grace. You know, so I'm I'm really encouraging them, um, you know, to to for all of their work, and uh, I'm glad that 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 they have spoken out, and they have my encouragement. And I know many Catholics around Ireland will encourage them. You know, be a priest, show your identity. It's the only way that we can renew the church. You know, as and as I said, I speak from experience here. God bless. Take care. Bye bye.